Good morning. Welcome back to Aleppo Shriners Auditorium in beautiful, snowy Wilmington, mm -hmm. Massachusetts this morning. Uh, here at day two of Lobster Roll 2019, the first ever WFTDA recognized tournament by Boston Roller Derby. I am Beautiful Banshee. Good morning, I'm Scar Trek. Good morning, Scar Trek. It's great to be here with you. Uh, we are in for a treat. Uh, we have Naptown versus Boston. Naptown entering as the top seed, uh, and we do have yesterday's scores, so we'll go over that in a moment, but we'll also give you our rosters, as it appears our teams are fired up and ready to roll. Yeah, everyone looks very awake this morning. Oh, yes, <laughs> despite what? spring forward. Why don't I introduce Naptown to get us started? They are wearing white today. Skating on the Tornado Sirens roster, we've got number 00, zero Roulette Wheels, number 07, Chariot of Fire, 123, Diamond, 16, Crash Into You, 237, Scorpio Pathic, 262, Langer, number 312, Emily Udell, number 5, True Debauchery, number 51, Micah, number 669, Teeth, number 7, Dora the Destroyer, number 76, Will Smith, 808, Boomsday, 84, Wham Bam, 856, Iggy Impalia, and number 934, Black Eye Sue. Boston Roller Derby's Boston Massacre skating in blue this morning in their huddle. We've got 11, Casey McLean, 120, Electrocute, 121, Agent Mulder, 1845, Lil Payne, 2, MC Slammer, 2089, Small Fox, 21, Emily Nolan, 211, Lock Tess Monsta, 43, Caitlin Monahan, 451, Rage Bradbury, 5, Sweet Enemy, 517 Tiger Eye, 749 Wednesday Adams, 8 Audrey Planets, 90 Lil Something, and 93 Crum. And I do need to just correct that. It looks like we had a typo. I apologize. It's Audrey Planets, not Audrey. <laughs> Well, as we get the stream started this morning on day two of Lobster Roll, New England Roller Derby Report would like to thank their production sponsor, Sociopath. That's S-E-W-C-I-O-P-A-T-H. Sociopath is a skater-run business offering custom sewn-to-order legwear for teams and individuals, size-inclusive activewear designed to fit you. Sociopath also offers dozens of armbands and helmet cover options for scrimmages and competition. Team discounts are available, so please visit them online at sociopath.ca for more details. They have some great options. I know I've been perusing. <laughs> <laughs> and it looks like we're about to start off day two. Your jammers of record in blue for Boston Massacre. That is Casey McLean, number 11. And and Will Smith with the star, our top scoring jammer yesterday for Naptown. Uh, already underway, Will Smith looking for the outside line, takes a bump out of bounds. And uh, I noticed yesterday that a lot of the action is stopping right in corner one at the pivot line, and that's what's going on right now. Big yeah. jumble of, of bodies there. Of course, the key shutdown of the inside lane, and of course, Apex's Jammer's Delight. <laughs> oh, attempting to stomp through, Will Smith is drawn back, having to reset, pushing the pack out into the edge of turn two, and it appears we do have an expansion, but quickly accordioning back. Yeah, and if you didn't join us yesterday on the broadcast, you might be a little bit confused by uh, who Will Smith is, but that's the skater formerly known as Made in America, a very long time uh -huh. um, veteran of the Tornado Sirens roster. But Lee Jammer now going to Boston Massacre. Will Smith also out on the initial pass. Naptown defense set up in the front, knocks out Boston's jammer, and the instruction from the bench is to get the jam called off. So we will see how many points go up for the massacre there. Well, it's an like all four. An instant official timeout. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So Boston with first blood this morning on the second day of lobster roll, four to zero on the jam for the massacre. And I can tell you a little bit about the scores from yesterday for these two teams. Naptown taking two big wins yesterday. The first one over Houston, first thing in the morning. Uh, that was 135 to 122. And then on the five o'clock game, Naptown had a big win over Sacramento, 234 to 116. Boston also coming out on top in both of their games yesterday. So this is a real clash of the titans this morning on day two of Lobster Roll. Boston taking the win over Sacramento by about 100 points. And then in the final game in the evening last night, about a 40 point win over Dublin. So out to jam next, we got Lock Test Monster for Boston taking on Scorpio Pathic for the Tornado Sirens. Naptown in white this morning, Boston in blue. And the 
official review or the official timeout. I'm not sure which, which it was, but it's concluded. Sorry about that, had to uh, <laughs> pop off there uh, for a second uh, and scoot away, but it's good to be back. And uh, even more fun than Smite running in heels mm -hmm. is happy dance time on yeah. the bench. Always, always entertaining that one. Definitely. <laughs> we have a great view right here right. <laughs> behind Boston's team bench. So jam underway now, Lock Test Monster versus Scorpiopathic. Uh, everyone's stopped at the pivot line. Jammer's looking for a path through. Scorpiopathic goes down to her knees. Awkward blocker sandwich in process. Drawback is successful on Lock Test Monster. Uh, but the pack moving ahead into turn two. And it is Scorpiopathic securing lead for Naptown. Yeah, Lock Test Monster just one to beat in the front. Also makes it out on the initial pass and eligible to score now for Boston as Scorpiopathic hitting the back of the pack finds a lane around the outside line. I think that's going to be all four points for Naptown. So answering that first jam by Boston, four to four. And we've got, I think, one lead jammer call for both of the teams at this point, four points each as we head into jam number three. Rage Bradbury taking the star for Boston up against Diamond. Now, Diamond skated in the first game yesterday, but at the in the last game that Naptown played at 5 p.m., wasn't able to join the roster for that game. I think there was some kind of injury, um, looks like a minor injury in warm-up, something like that. So she took that game off, but I'm glad to see her back today. Me very, too. very strong and aggressive jammer. Already out for lead jammer status for the Tornado Sirens and coming around for points now. Definitely up and at him for Diamond. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and spinning round the outside up the line, though, driven out and back behind the pivot line. Diamond back at it. And Brad does escape, but it appears Diamond calls it before any points accrued by Boston. And three points for Naptown, taking them to seven, our official first lead change of the game. Seven to four, Naptown Tornado Sirens on top of Massacre. And we are only just under three minutes in, Trekkie. It's and and Rach wow. Bradbury is a, a transfer skater on the Boston Massacre, right? Yes. Coming from Granite State? Granite State in New Hampshire. Okay. Uh, and also uh, Lil Something uh, came from there as well. Oh, okay. Yes. But Lil Something been on the charter for yes. a couple yes, of years. Yes, since yeah. last year. Okay. But what's interesting is uh, with Brad yesterday, that the first game here at Lobster Roll was her first sanctioned game with Massacre. That's great. Yeah. Very cool. Well, out to jam next, Will Smith for Naptown working on the defense in the back. Finds a line on the inside. Looks like getting some daylight there, but uh, almost makes it out. Sweetie is there to stop the progress. Uh, oh, an 8-5-6. That is Iggy and Pelia able to drive out Small Fox, but she does bounce back in off to the penalty box. Iggy and Pelia goes. So Will Smith able to complete the initial pass with star in hand as Boston's jammer in for a scoring pass, getting instruction to get the thing called off. All four points picked up, so Boston answering back. This has been a four here, four there kind of game so far. Mm -hmm. So. One point up on the board as we enter into jam number five coming up next. Number 237, Scorpiopathic taking the star for the Tornado Sirens. Up against number 11, Casey McLean for Boston Massacre. And while we have a moment, Boston Roller Derby would like to thank Polar Seltzer. They made a fantastic donation to us, so hashtag Polar Derby. <laughs> jam is on, and we have Boston's defense up front. Meanwhile, we have uh, Casey McLean able to bust through the middle, lead to her credit. Pack mid turn one and two, and continuing to push. That is Scorpiopathic, and really having to put in work. We're seeing uh, a little bit of clock burn coming from Massacre's defense. Yeah, Boston losing one to the box here. That's number 90, little something. Mm -hmm. And Scorpiopathic able to complete the initial pass for Naptown. Casey comes through on the scoring pass, calls off the jam with four points, holding Naptown scoreless, so extending that lead ever so slightly. 
And of course, this is the number 35 ranked Boston Massacre taking on number 28, Naptown. So a little bit of um, difference between these two teams, but very closely ranked. We're expecting a, a close game, just like we've seen in, in the first five jams. Well, and that's what makes it even more exciting. It keeps you anticipating all throughout. Definitely not dull. Lock Test <laughs> Monster versus Roulette Wheels off the line. Did Roulette Wheels, I believe her jammer debut in this game? Uh, yeah, I believe so. Okay. And uh, Roulette Wheels was kind of the fourth jammer in the rotation in yesterday's morning game for mm -hmm. Naptown when Diamond was skating. Um, yesterday evening when Diamond mm -hmm. wasn't skating, she took on a much uh, bigger role in the jammer rotation for Naptown. Did a great job last night at five. Um, and it looks like she's back to her kind of fourth position in the rotation for Naptown, but a very strong and capable jammer. I think Naptown's got a very deep jammer bench, which is which is a wonderful <laughs> thing to have. <laughs> nice thing to have for sure. Yeah. So uh, Roulette Wheel is able to come through for four points, answer back um, with, with Boston's last jam, bringing it within one point once again and getting the jam called off, holding Boston scoreless on that last one. Out next, it's Will Smith for Naptown, taking on Rage Bradbury for Boston. Number 76, Will Smith on the track. Heck, rolling back Number to four, engage the jammers. Brad, Brad caught up on the outside line, though laterally being going to the in with the drawback, able to come around, though it appears we have a cutting the track penalty assessed to Brad, so it means a power jam in favor of Naptown. Yeah, Will Smith on a power jam, a big opportunity for Naptown, very depleted defense out there. We've got skaters in the box for both teams. Oh, big contact there at the front of the pack by Will Smith, able to make it through on the first scoring pass for the Tornado Sirens. Monahan released from the box, rejoins, it's a Boston line. Wow, Will Smith just did such a great job of seeing where the offense was, pausing for just a moment to take, be able to take full advantage of that offense and made a, a really easy pass. Second scoring pass logged for Naptown on this power jam. R Rage Bradbury standing in the penalty box right now, getting ready to return with star in hand. Oh, interesting re-entry there, goes the long way around. Decides not to go back. This kind of gets some speed up, I guess, and, and run it from the back. Oh, trips over uh, Adams, I think. Is that the pins come crashing down. Yes, yeah. Wednesday Adams. So cycling back with Brad. Uh, meanwhile, Will Smith pushing up against the trio of Monahan and company. Naptown with defense set up in the back, really handling Rage Bradbury after that stumble over the teammate, a long reset. Looks like Naptown gonna pick up four more points, holding Boston scoreless, calls off the jam. So Naptown opening up a bit of a lead there. That was a big 16 point pickup for the Tornado Sirens, 27 to 12. We've got just under 22 minutes left in the first period. And three lead changes already, with a big one right there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, definitely significant. And I think that was our first jammer penalty as well yes. in the game. So um, if, if one of the Naptown jammers goes to the box, that'll be the opportunity that Boston needs to kind of answer that back big 16 point power jam. Oh, in with a zigzag hop right into the middle of the pack from the inside line, Scorpio Pathic making her way around the outside, though it does obtain a cutting the track penalty. So here's that power jam yeah, Boston power needed. Jam. What, what is this, you know, uh, foreshadowing? Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> not intentional, not at all. Uh, but Pat keeping it slow in the back stretch. Currently, Small Fox, duck, dip, diving and dodging around, able to add four for Massacre. Naptown positioning in the front, right at the edge of turn three, anxiously awaiting Small Fox's arrival. Yeah, it's a vulnerable spot to, to be set up for a power jam, but Naptown doing a great job with the defense, very aggressive. I, we saw it yesterday, and I, I talked a little bit about it in the games yesterday, and even to the, our MVP interview yesterday. Um, but Naptown really a very aggressive style of defense. They really move their blockers to the jammer and put all the bodies on the jammer that they possibly can. Makes it difficult to play offense um, for, for Boston in this case, to be able to help their jammer and they're really able to contain, particularly when they set this formation up at the back of the pack. So that's kind of what we're seeing right now. Nice hit on the inside by Iggy Ampelia, the MVP from yesterday afternoon's game. Um, nice. Rightfully so. <laughs> yeah, nice job there. Boston picking up four more points, so eight on the jam, holding Naptown scoreless there. 
And just a reminder, if you did not know, Lobster Roll is a WFTDA recognized tournament. And I'll be sure to let you know about additional upcoming There's WFTDA so many. recognized tournaments. We have a huge list. Clover Cup coming up in North Richland Hills, Texas in a couple of weeks. So we'll get to that in a moment. But back to the game. Diamond wearing the star for Naptown. They are in white. Casey McLean for Massacre. They are in blue. Casey just had uh, almost had that inside line, but just stepped out of bounds, had to reset. And it looks like a track cut going to Diamond for Naptown. So another power jam opportunity here for the Massacre. And uh, Naptown also with Iggy and Pelia standing in the penalty box. Boston losing another blocker to the penalty box. So we're having a little bit of a, a little bit too much action over there, I'd say, this early in the game. But we'll see if they can. Right, let's not turn this into a penalty box party. Right. Mm -hmm. Oh, we lose another one to the box here. It's number 90, little something. Joining Wednesday Adams. And so the snack pack out there from Massacre working hard to place some O from McLean, driven to the infield. And Agent Mulder heading for the penalty box, waved off because of the two seated blockers. No room so in she's in the queue. Yeah. And uh, a note coming over from our producer was 100% lead jammer status for Casey McLean, the top scoring jammer for Boston. And that's the only jammer in this game so far with 100% lead. Diamond coming through the pack for four points out of the box on um, the conclusion of that power jam. Oh, and the juke to the outside, but Massacre's defense wise to it with the drawback mid-back stretch, though it appears a penalty called against Wednesday Adams, uh, you know, tending to be uh, a pretty good enforcer out there for the Massacre. Nice, double, the box, nice double team up front by yeah. Little Payne and Little Something holding back Diamond. Big hit at the front of the pack, but Diamond's able to make it through on another scoring pass. And in the meantime, Casey McLean had picked up four points for Boston, had come around for another scoring pass. No additional points, though, for Boston, so it's 8-4 to four on the jam in favor of the Tornado Sirens. We've got under 18 minutes left in the first period. So heading into Jam 10, uh, just a reminder, if you are watching on Twitch TV, first off, thank you for joining us this morning. Welcome. Yes, it is lovely to have you joining us for Lobster Roll. And your jammers, thank you, too. We have 2-1-1 <laughs> Lock Test Monster up against Roulette Wheels uh, for Naptown. Breaks on off the line. Yeah, Naptown uh, with the defense set up in the back, but... That's Lock Test Monster finding an inside line. Lead jammer status going to Boston Massacre. Roulette wheels dealing with a two wall in the front. That looks like Sweetie and number 21, Emily no Nolan. And some may know Nolan as Malice Paul. She mm -hmm. decided to go by her legal name. Power so jam, <laughs> yep. So roulette wheels headed to the penalty box. Lock Test Monster on a power jam. Pack keeping relatively centered in the back stretch, really forcing the jammers to engage before taking action. Lactus Monster working at Iggy and Pelia and company, driven to the infield and drawn back mid stretch, mid back stretch. But command from the bench to call it to Lactus Monster. Yeah, roulette wheels standing in the penalty box there. So looking for the power start on our next jam for Boston Massacre. Three more points picked up by Boston, so seven on the jam, bringing this to four-point game. Yes. Intense, most definitely. It's a good way to start the day. <laughs> it really is. Hey, if you weren't awake, you are now. Rage Bradbury taking the, the power start opportunity here for Boston Massacre. Looks like we've got a clear box other than Roulette Wheels standing in there, so full complement of, of blockers for both teams. Roulette Wheels released from the penalty box now, meeting up with Boston's defense in the back of the pack. Boston's defense able to take Roulette Wheels to the outside line, bounces right back in, a lead secured by uh, Rage Bradbury. And we have a penalty against Roulette Wheels. Another penalty. Oh, a high block. 
A little bit of confusion on the track. It looks like Rage Bradbury also headed out for a penalty. That was a track cut, so double power jam here. And I, I remember saying earlier in the game that there had just been that, that one power jam, and now I feel like we're up at like five or, s <laughs> five or six power jams. <laughs> it happened pretty quick here. We're just now entering the second quarter of the game. And it wasn't a request, and <laughs> I guess you never know. Be careful what you wish for. Yeah, but exactly. I uh, also just wanted to note, Trekkie, that we have four leads in a row for Boston the massacre mm. on this jam and I'd like to give a shout out to our fantabulous producer shenanigan skywalker feeding us all the info we appreciate it and also new england roller derby report for the great stream quality but speaking of quality blocking that's naptown's defense working on brad yeah, Brad with a nice move up the inside line, using the toe stops to make it around the defensive wall with some help from a teammate there. Always helps to get some offense, but both jammers through and approaching the back of the pack. We had wow. a star pass to Cherry to Fire. Yeah, Cherry to Fire was the MVP in the first yes. game yesterday morning. It was a fantastic post-game interview. Yeah. <laughs> Brad at the back of the Naptown line, right before the pivot line, everything keeping relatively slow, and it appears both jammers being taken to the lines. Now Boston already has eight points on this jam. Rage making it through for another scoring pass. It's gonna bring the total to 12, and keeping Naptown scoreless, oh, lies. Three points go up for Naptown right there at the end. So 12 to three on the jam in favor of Boston. And that was uh, the quickest catch ever. <laughs> Lies on myself. And yeah, so fifth lead change of the game. I, and yes, I am counting. I'm keeping a tally just out of my own curiosity. Yeah, well, this is a two closely ranked teams, as we mentioned earlier. So we expect a close and competitive mm -hmm. game. And that is the best part about Lobster Roll, bringing you some high quality derby from some teams you may not see together the rest of the season. But straight out the gate, making extremely quick work, Small Fox securing lead for Massacre. Will Smith is her opposition. Pack spreading out from turns one to two, though not without a fight. Massacre's defense working to shut it down, but not enough to hold Will Smith. Yeah, finds a line around the outside, clear on the initial pass as a uh, little, what is it, small fox, little fox, I almost said. <laughs> There's a lot of littles on the Boston Massacre yes. roster, but this well, is a small fox. But small fox, the thing I like is that small fox, it's all one word. Mm. So instead of small pox, you <laughs> think, aw, small fox, that's cute. Oh, that's cuter than because small pox. Small pox, not cute. Not cute. Small fox, <laughs> adorable, but also aggressive on the track. <laughs> All right, we got a timeout going to Naptown. It's a good opportunity to thank another one of our sponsors. I've got Cambridge School of Culinary Arts offering professional culinary and pastry training programs, recreational cooking classes for everyone, and private cooking or baking classes for family parties or corporate events. You can visit them online, cambridgeculinary.com, for more information. We thank them for their support. And speaking of thanking folks for their support, our officiating staff here at Lobster Roll 2019, on the track before you are on skating referees. We have Dred Hockley as your head referee, joined by Bibbity Bobbity Boom, Shanksy, Admiral Mayhem, Molotov Latte, Shebra, Shreff, and Dura Queer. Our head NSO, Chemical Restraint, joined by Constance Killjoy, Gorier Estefan, Chemical Restraint, Oh, ke well, chemical restraint got put on the list twice because they're that important. Drop Dead Gorgon, Burt Hurt, Torque Mama, Le Corbusier, The Kraken, and Slammerous. Yeah, it's, um, it's always amazing to see the organization and professionalism from the officials, skating and non-skating officials at these tournaments. I mean, they give up their entire weekend uh, to make tournaments like this happen, and especially when every single game is sanctioned. It's so important to have quality officials, and that's something we definitely have here this weekend. We're so very grateful. Yes, we are, and that is due in huge part to Jeff and Toxic Marcotic, our head officials for the tournament. But back to gameplay, Scorpiopathic versus Casey McLean off the jammer line. It is on, and everyone is pushing forward, though we don't seem to be moving past turn one right now. <laughs> Scorpiopathic pushing at the front wall of Boston. Got all four blockers up there. Naptown with three in the back and a bridge to keep those players um, in play at the back of the pack there. Scorpiopathic 
Getting some help from number 51, Micah, the team captain for the Tornado Sirens, but it's gonna be Casey McLean, lead jammer for Boston Massacre. Took 37 seconds for lead to be declared. So that's a testament to Naptown's defensive efforts. So that was a high block, I believe, yes, for high block. Scorpio Pathic. Power jam now for Casey McLean, who's taken a hit to the outside. Has to reset, coming into corner four now. Able to step around number 84 and make it through for a scoring pass on the power jam. Naptown with defense set up in the front here, starting to roll a little bit. Massacre ready for the pick if needed, and there we have it. Pivot Adams, along with little something, gave a little offense, though a penalty assessed to Wednesday Adams. Yeah, I think that's at least her third. third. Mm -hmm. So Scorpio Pathic back in from the penalty box. Successful star pass now to number 84. That's uh, Wham Bam taking the star for the Naptown Tornado Sirens, pushing one to beat at the front, able to make it out on the initial pass. Casey McLean already with four more points on the power jam, coming around for a third scoring pass for Boston. Cherry out of fire, able to detain Casey McLean on the inside line, driven back to the jammer line area. Meanwhile, a swarm of Naptown defense able to hold Casey McLean at bay, but jam is over yeah, after Naptown. Four more points go yeah. for Naptown, three more for Boston, so. Fire right out of the penalty box. Yeah, <laughs> I think it's gonna end up being 11 to four on the jam. And that brings Massacre to 58 points, Naptown 42. We have under 10 minutes remaining in the first period. And it's worth noting, uh, Naptown has had five jammer penalties in the last six jams. So not a very friendly stat for the scoreboard. And it certainly tells the story. Mm -hmm. right Boston, Boston able to really extend the lead here. Diamond out to jam next though for the Naptown Tornado Sirens, taking on number 211, Loctus Monster for Boston Massacre. Test securing lead. Sweetie with a hit, um, drawing the cut yeah. against Diamond. I'm not sure why, yeah, I'm not sure why she stepped back in in front of everybody there, but um, definitely needed to reset behind the blocker who knocked her out and sitting in the box for a track cut. And we know the heat is most definitely on, specifically after that mention about the jammer penalty mm -hmm. situation on yeah. Naptown. So six out of the last seven jams now. <laughs> Locked us monster making it through on a scoring pass for Boston and uh, Iggy and Palia headed to the penalty box for Naptown. And Diamond standing up. And I'm not sure if it got, if it was picked up on the stream because I know our, our mics are pretty filtered, which is nice, though there was a countdown going on, the loud noises from the track. Mm. It was beyond your normal communication, so I will inquire. That was an illegal re-entry, oh. so Diamond headed directly back to the penalty box. She, she did the same thing that the Boston Jammer did earlier, came in in front of the pack instead of behind the pack, but didn't give that required amount of distance that you need to re-enter in front of the pack, so an illegal re-entry and another power jam here for Boston that is the type of penalty that just breaks your heart you know it's not it's it, it does. easily avoidable it, it is and then sometimes I think that's when it highlights perhaps why mental game is so crucial yeah uh, we know this being skaters and also seeing it um, when we're calling games it, it's really easy sometimes to get a little rattled and then you go, oh, why Just did I do that? Bad decisions, yeah. Yeah, bad decisions. In the heat of the moment. I mean, Diamond is an experienced player, about 242 points on the season last year. Very reliable, 54% lead. So an experienced jammer for Naptown, but still susceptible to. Oh, absolutely. Nobody is perfect. We are all That's human. That's true. That is true. Back to the track. We have Diamond, of course, starting in the box. So Brad for Massacre taking the power start. And Boston has a player isolated in the back, but they also have a player up in the front playing offense. So the strategy not quite as cohesive as they would want on this power jam, I think. Diamond comes in hot to the back of the pack, takes a knock to the inside line, has to reset. And that's a twosome of MC Slammer with Wednesday Adams. And that can be particularly aggressive and dangerous. <laughs> And I mean that in the best possible way. Both jammers um, kind of hung up on defense right now, not making a whole lot of forward progress into corner two. Adams going for the offense in the front. And again, it just continues to shift. Rage Bradbury pushing at the front, just two more Naptown blockers to beat. 
has to deal with number 84, Wham Bam, at the front. Also number five, True Debauchery. Important defensive players for Naptown. Uh, Chariot of Fire coming in from the box. That's a pivot for Naptown. Maybe able to provide some help to the Naptown jammer. Nice pass at the back of the pack and a quick step through. One minute and 15 seconds. That is out of the games, I think, of every game this weekend, the longest I've seen it's taken. So Chariot of Fire with the star now, forcing the call off by Boston's jammer. Two more points go up for Rage Bradbury. So that was a lot of work for a two to zero jam in favor of Boston. And worth every point, I bet. <laughs> Want to let you know about one of our sponsors, Bruised Boutique, the world's largest derby store made for derby by derby. You can visit them online at bruisedboutique.com or they have a brick and mortar location in Nashua, New Hampshire. And we were lucky enough to have them here yesterday, uh, but I missed them today. I think, <laughs> yeah, I got a patch and some stickers from them. They're always so great to see at tournaments. Yes. But back underway, Will Smith taking the star for Naptown. Small Fox caught up in the mix. Naptown with defense set up in the back like we saw for most of their play yesterday. Will Smith looking for some help from Iggy and Palia at the front. And Massacre seeming to enjoy the front. I don't know, you know if that will change moving forward, but we'll see slowly but surely Pack getting pushed into the back stretch with a little bit of speed now and uh, seeing double backwards blocking from Aubrey Planets and Sweetie. Will Smith able to grab lead jammer status. Small Fox making it out on the initial pass as well, about a quarter track between the two jammers. Looks like Naptown is all set up in the back. Boston racing the front of the pack. Really establishing control for speed and hoping to wear out Will Smith, but no such luck. A quick spin around the mm -hmm. front, jam is called. Will Smith walking away with well, points. Well, they, they haven't called points yet. The referees oh, are talking about sorry, who was passed. I was waiting for the hand. Yeah, <laughs> so they're consulting one another because Will Smith, um, in, in completing that pass, kind of spun around the outside line. So two points picked up there How from that time. Yes, just two. Yeah, Will Smith really good about being willing to call halfway through a pass at the in the nick of time, you know, to, to prevent the other jammer from scoring. So there it was just two points, but willing to call that jam off. And in doing so, that was the first Naptown lead in the last nine jams. Mm. So, you know, it, it's been a bit of a tough go getting started, but we'll see as that lead perhaps a quick turn for them. Case McLean with lead right now and a star pass in progress for Naptown. That's Cherry to Fire, I believe. With star and no, it's 80, number 84, Wham Bam, Bam. the pivot mm -hmm. for Naptown with the star in hand, trying to make it out on the initial pass for Naptown. Casey McLean coming around on a scoring pass. Quick recycling from the massacre line, and we have it, them dropping to two. Agent Mulder, along with a little something, putting the brakes right onto Wham Bam. Joined by Wednesday Adams, adding a quick brace, though Naptown going for some O. And that was 0-7, Chariot of Fire. Yeah, Chariot of Fire often the pivot for Naptown, but um, able to play a supporting role for the pivot turn jammer in this jam. Wham bam for Naptown. And proving to be effectively mm -hmm. annoying to the <laughs> opposing jammer. <Yeah. laughs> Stone and I were talking yesterday during the Sacramento-Boston game, and effectively annoying. Yes, <laughs> that's exactly your goal. <laughs> yep, that's a good goal for, yes. for a blocker. Yes. And Pack moving back slightly in the back stretch, and we're seeing Wham Bam get a little one-on-one -on -one from almost every member of the yeah. Boston line. Able to make it through, though, on the initial pass for Naptown, so going to put the pressure on to get Casey McLean to call this off, and she does. And luckily, hearing the command from the bench in the nick of time, noise has been an issue because of a little bit of an echo here at Shriners Auditorium, though, uh, you know, skaters seem to be able to make it work this morning. Boston put up three points on that jam, bringing their total up to 74, so a clean 30 points between the two teams. And we are about two minutes from the end of period one. Out to jam, we've got roulette wheels for Naptown. Up against Lock Tess Monster for Boston. And we've got jam 18 in Tess progress. heading for the inside, though. Appears the, the wall in front of her does come Lock down, Lock and Lock roulette Lock wheels going for the outside. Ooh, Lock Tess Monster oh. with a, 
I don't remember what this. Oh, this is a low block. Low bro oh, wait, yes. but I thought it changed. Did it not change? Hand signals, I feel like, nope, are confusing me. Block. Okay, still low block. So, lock test monster in the box for a low block. That um, is one thing I can tell you that I, I've i studied enough and I've had a few official friends of mine drill me. Yeah. <laughs> so, even the brand newest you. new ones. Yes. Okay, all right. Yes. I trust you. I trust you. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know what it was? It was the former delay of game, which is now the illegal contact. Yeah. 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 That, that's the one I have like to remember. Uh. Yes. <laughs> We work hard too, folks. Yeah, you, you and I are both kind of old yes. school too. So it's like, how many hand signals, <laughs> how many changes have we had over the years? Well, just be grateful we don't have to deal with outside whiteboard. That has yes. a lot oh of died. <laughs> RIP. But <laughs> we'll talk about those other fun things later. But seeing that we do not have a power jam, that if you overheard that from the house, looks like there was some confusion. Yeah. But jam called by Naptown. Nap <laughs> finally awarded lead jammer status, immediately calls it yes. off. Um, I believe no points picked up by anyone on that one. So we've got nope. under 40 seconds left on the period clock. So we will get another jam. Rage Bradbury taking the star for Boston. And that is Will Smith for Naptown Tornado Sirens. If you're just joining us, Naptown in white, Boston in blue. Both teams at full staff heading into what will likely be last jam of the first period which has gone by super fast, mm -hmm. and not just in the Ricky Bobby manner of things, just pacing in general. It's been quite fun to watch. Will Smith with oh no, for the casual cat. apex jump, though, yeah. penalty. So Naptown definitely with um, some jammer penalty trouble this morning. It's been plaguing them, I'd say. Both teams have had a number of, of power jams, but Naptown in particular, bit heavy on the jammer penalties and it's showing up on the scoreboard banshee yes it most definitely is it tells that story for us though with halftime quickly approaching perhaps a good opportunity for a reset a forearm call assessed on our nap town blocker that's yes. the captain micah oh, captain micah yes so four points go up for boston as will smith comes out of the penalty box brad coming up the middle and right behind, that is Will Smith. And we have a swarm of nap town blockers, though, getting some O from Will Sump. Getting caught up right into turn three, but the knockout coming from 07, Chariot of Fire. Not to, not a surprise there, working on Brad. Nap town loses another blocker to the penalty box as Micah gets released. Will Smith crouching down. <laughs> trying to figure out a path through the pack here. Boston's defense set up in the back, really tough tripod back there. Sometimes it's wise to just pause and disengage. It can make a world of difference. But and we have a star pass in progress for Naptown. Chariot of Fire with the star in hand. And it looks like Rage Bradbury decided to call that off with four points, uh, four additional points going up for Boston. So eight to zero on the jam. And certainly not a jam that needed to be called off to prevent scoring, so I think it was more of a, I've had enough yeah. of this. <laughs> Let's call this off. Okay, I'm done, guys. Eight is enough. Yes. <laughs> and, uh, you know, a great start to the day. Cannot wait to see how we continue when we return from halftime. We are leaving it off. Boston Massacre at 82 points. Naptown Tornado Sirens at 44. And before we go, we would just like to keep a, a heads up here. We have an official review being requested by, by Naptown. Oh, I'm sorry, it was Boston. Yeah, it was Boston. Sorry. I thought I saw my Okay, requested by Boston. And uh, while they tend to that, just wanted to get back to the WFTDA recognized tournaments that we mentioned earlier. So Lobster Roll starting the party for 2019, of course, which we are proud to say. And uh, Clover Cup coming up March 22nd through 24th, North Richland Hills, Texas, hosted by Dallas Derby Devils. After that, sticking with the devil theme, Dust Devil, March 29th to 31st in Tucson, Arizona, hosted by Tucson Roller Derby. And Euro Cup, because we have Roller Derby everywhere, April 12th to 14th in Bury, England, hosted by Rainy City Roller Derby, and we love Rainy, and Siege of Central New York, April 13th to 14th in Rome, New York, hosted by CNY, known as Central New York Roller Derby, and same weekend, Skate to Thrill, Charles, St. Charles, Missouri, hosted by St. Chuck's Derby Chicks. So there's a whole list you can find at wftda.com slash events. Go check it out, and we hope to see you there. Scar Trek, 
it's been a fun first period. Yeah, mm -hmm. and before we sign off here, I want to thank mm -hmm. again uh, our production sponsor this weekend for New England Roller Derby Report, Sociopath. That's S-E-W-C-I-O-P-A-T-H. Sociopath is a skater-run business offering custom sewn-to-order legwear for teams and for individuals, size-inclusive activewear designed to fit you. Sociopath also offers dozens of armbands and helmet cover options for scrimmages and competition. Team discounts are available, so please find them online at sociopath.ca. Got some shopping to do. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're signing off now. we got about 13 minutes left on the halftime clock. We will be back at you in a few. Welcome back to the 2019 Lobster Roll. We're live from Wilmington, Massachusetts at the Shriners Auditorium. My name is Scar Trek. And I'm Beautiful Banshee. And we're headed into period two of Naptown versus Boston. This is number 28, Naptown, taking on number 35, Boston. So two closely ranked teams, and it's been a pretty close first half. It actually opened up as uh, wide as it is right now, pretty late in the first period. Up to that point, it was pretty close and competitive, back and forth, many lead changes. I think your unofficial count is five. <laughs> Maybe, yes, five. It sat at five. At least five, yeah. And from uh, what we noticed, the pattern that occurred was uh, a string of jammer penalties on Naptown, unfortunately, uh, allowed the room for Massacre mm -hmm. to drive that score gap further apart. Uh, but the good thing is they've had some time to reset. We'll see what both teams have uh, in store as Casey McLean, along with number 76 on Naptown. That's Will Smith. Will Smith. I apologize because I looked at the wrong roster. <laughs> yes, they are ready to roll. Uh, we have a four to three pack advantage starting off period two as we have one blocker in the box for Naptown. It's teeth. Standing in the penalty box as we are about to get back underway. Five seconds called. And uh, just the penalty count at the half. There are 15 penalties for Boston, though 22 for Naptown. 22 is a little high for one period of play, I'd say. Uh, so Naptown needing to clean that up a little bit. Out for a quick lead. That's Boston's jammer. And springing out of the penalty box, Teeth able to go for that offensive pick. And it worked out for Will Smith. Yeah, Will Smith able to make it out pretty quickly, put the pressure on. I think that's going to be no points as far. Yep, no points for either team. Uh, Kaysa McLean took a hit to the inside line, fell to her knees, and had to call that thing off because uh, Will Smith was fast approaching the back of the pack. So scoreless jam to start out period two. And out with the star for Naptown in the next jam, that's Scorpio Pathic. Joined by Lock Test Monster for Massacre. And just in case I forgot to note, Naptown in white, Boston Massacre in black. I'm not black, blue. <laughs> More coffee. <laughs> so Scorpio Pathic really, really pushing at the back wall of defense for Boston. Finding a line through, it looks like, on the outside. Just one to beat in the front. And uh, you noticed, if you saw from the view of Jammer Line, the Boston line took almost a snake effect mm -hmm. going around the inside line to open up, though not effective for their jammer. Yeah, Boston Loctus Monster able to get lead jammer status, but I see them playing it really safe here. They want to protect the roughly 40-point lead that they have, so if there's any danger of the other team scoring, they are taking that 0-0 jam over um, any possibility of a penalty, any possibility of the Naptown jammer uh, sneaking in some points. Yes. So we've Securing two differentials. Yeah, yeah, two different, uh, two jams to start the second period with zero points for both teams. Out to jam next, Diamond for Naptown, taking on Rage Bradbury for Boston. Diamond taking some space, starting all the way back in turn four. Uh, though Brad pushing up the front, but pays off for Diamond taking the broad view. Lead secured for Naptown. Yeah, Diamond, a really powerful skater, able to make a run for that lead jammer status and, and get it. So coming around on a scoring pass now, able to sneak up the outside line. Now she was hit out, but the blocker who hit her fell down. So she's wondering if she can re-enter. <laughs> she plays it safe there. Uh, resets behind the defense for Boston. Makes it through on the outside line. Oh, but it's a back block being called on Diamond. So penalty once again for Naptown Jammer. And we've got a star pass on the Boston side. Yes, Rage Bradbury was getting stuck in the back of the pack, uh, thanks to Naptown's defense. Stars pass to Wednesday Adams. Her so pivot. this, yeah, this will be a two-minute jam. We've got about a minute left 
for Wednesday Adams on the power jam and then Diamond re-entering to score for Naptown on a scoring pass. I, I believe she'll be coming in on a scoring pass. And Cherry to fire straight down the middle of the pack took Wednesday Adams back. Though Adams is able to sweep back in and a quick swarm of Naptown defense able to hold back Adams and penalty kill in process a la Naptown. Naptown's doing a great job on defense up at the front of the pack. That's Captain Micah along with Wham Bam and the pivot. I think that's Sherry to fire. And yeah. yes, it is. And the thing I love about Adams, uh, just really triple threat on the track, yeah. though the style in which Adams pushes. So Diamond back in from the penalty box, able to complete the scoring pass that she was on. So four points now on the power jam for Naptown and an amazing kill for yes. the Tornado Sirens. That penalty is officially dead. <laughs> Adam still working on the initial pass for Boston. And in turn four, up on the tiptoes, the quick pass from Diamond. Success for Naptown. Three Let's more points. An eight to three jam in favor of the Tornado Sirens. So now at 52 to Massacre's 85, just four minutes into the second period. Yeah, and I think I said there that Adams was on the initial pass and that was incorrect. So three points picked up by Boston on the jam to Naptown's eight points, 25 minutes, 45 seconds left to go on the second period clock. We've got Will Smith with the star for Naptown. And let's see, as oh, Small Fox is jamming so small, <laughs> hidden between a couple of blockers for Massacre. And uh, just something I noticed in our Twitch TV chat, aside from lead secured by Will Smith of Naptown, uh, seeming to be back-to-back -back jams with Lee, very nice mm -hmm. for them. Uh, sociopath on Twitch TV says, they don't want to block a get your jam against Adams. And a forearm penalty on Small Fox, sending her to the penalty box power jam in favor of Will Smith and Naptown. Yeah, Nap uh, Boston with the defense set up in the front. That's anchored by Monahan bracing that defensive wall, but Will Smith able to find a line through. Four points going up for Naptown on the power jam. And Naptown doing a great job of kind of actively trying to break up the defensive formation of Boston. Looks like they're setting up for some offense now as Will Smith comes around and meets up with the wall. Will Smith gunning from Monahan, knowing that Monahan is a threat as pivot. Small Fox back in from the penalty box and dealing with the four wall of Naptown defense in the back. Will Smith just one more to beat in the front, able to make it by for another four points. That's eight, uh, that's 12 points on the jam so far. And a star pass successful for Boston to Monahan. Will Smith coming around for the fourth scoring pass for Naptown here. Takes a bump to the outside line and calls off the jam. And a successful division of Boston's tripod by Iggy and Palia. So wow, what a performance by Naptown in that jam. A, a big win for them, um, having, you know, having to deal with a number of jammer penalties in this game so far, able to keep their defense under control. That's, that's really a, st a statement about the uh, cohesiveness of, of the way that their defensive lines play together to be able to hold that. And most definitely with the, with the nice little time out there at halftime, mm -hmm. uh, being able to capitalize on it. Scorpio Pathic, uh, with the, Scorpio Pathic with a star for Naptown out next, pushing on a back wall of Boston. And like, clean in there for okay, Massacre. Clean. And again, that cluster in turn one, I like to call that an awkward blocker sandwich because everybody seems to be caught up in the middle, though we can't see exactly who is where. Yeah. <laughs> and the big push happening, but very little movement. I see Scorpio Pathic pushing at the back and McLean kind of taking a bump to the inside line towards the middle of the pack. Two to beat in the front for McLean. That's the captain, Micah, standout defensive player for Naptown. Also Teeth with the two wall in the front for Naptown. Cherry to Fire joining forces up there. And they're successfully able to knock McLean out of bounds. I see a multiplayer block being called. That's gonna go to a Boston blocker. A little something with the shoulder assist, breaking things up for Casey McLean. Scorpio Pathic able to complete the initial pass, taking some hits actually, gets a bump to the inside line. I spoke too soon, just gonna have to reset on that one. 
Well, everybody has to reset every once in a while. <laughs> no, you know, no big deal, right? Unless, of course, you're jamming and you want to get all of the points. Now, both jammers taken to the lines. McLean going butt first into the Naptown line right before pivot line. Though Ooh, everybody nice, it's a nice star pass there. So quick star pass from Scorpio Pathic to Chariot of Fire, able to get the star out of the pack and put some pressure on. Casey McLean, of course, has lead jammer status here, so forcing the call off by Boston, just two additional points picked up. So wow, that was a very rough jam for a total of two points going to Boston. Small payoff. <laughs> Lots of work, yes. small gain on the scoreboard, but Boston still very much in control of this game. 21 points yes. between the two teams. I don't know why math gets so hard uh, when there's a microphone present. <laughs> uh, you know, no pressure. None at all. And uh, thanks for those cheering us on and, uh, you know, staying tuned on Twitch TV, courtesy of the Women's Slack Track Derby Association. We are happy to have you with us. And Roulette Wheels out on the track for Naptown in white with the star up against Loctus Monster of Boston Massacre. Yeah, Roulette Wheels pushing on a back tripod for Boston. Really effective defense back in the back for them. And it looks like Loctus Monster able to make it past Iggy and Pelia at the front of the pack. Lead jammer status to the Boston Massacre. Coming around on a scoring pass now as Roulette Wheels still working on the initial star in hand at the back of the pack. And we're seeing a small group right around the turn two apex and a twosome of Naptown defense taking Loctess Monsta to the outside in the back stretch, but Tess keeps play. pushing. Yeah, eventually push those blockers out of play. Great effort by the front two wall of Naptown defense, but that's uh, the first scoring pass for Boston. Coming around on scoring pass number two for Loctess Monster. Meets up once again with Iggy and Pelia at the yeah. front of the pack. Doing the shoulder dance, as I like to call it, though Iggy and Pelia knows the out of play warning was there, mm -hmm. had to let Tess go, picking up four more. So now a successful star pass to crash into you, the pivot for Naptown, who took a number of star passes yesterday. Um, took a spill, though, on the outside line, has to kind of restart this pass for Naptown. And it seems we have pendulum jammers just constantly in, out, crossing paths as they push through. Uh, cutting the track penalty on pivot crash into you. Um, Boston's blocker expertly moved back to pull that cut and crash into you actually stepped back out of bounds, but I guess it wasn't quite soon enough. Uh, and the cutting penalty was called. So now a power start for Boston in the next jam. Big pickup for the massacre there, 12 to zero. 33 points separate the two, 99 to 66 Massacre on top. And we are just over 10 minutes into the second period with much more ahead of us. Brad taking the line for the power start in favor of Boston Massacre. And yeah, and that's gonna be crash into you, the pivot turn jammer in the last jam, sitting in the penalty box to start the next jam for Naptown. And a pack advantage for Naptown as Monahan starting in the box for Boston. Brad pushing the Naptown line right into turn two, though constantly cycling, and we see a quick sweep of Massacre offense. Kersey a little soft. All right, crash into you, released from the penalty box. Uh, headed out there to jam. I see Cherry to fire with the pivot stripe on at the front of the pack, so we'll see if there's a, a star pass attempt here for Naptown. Crash into you was a very effective pivot yesterday, able to make it out of the pack on her own strength, uh, so we'll see. How she does here against Boston's very tough looking back wall of defense. Oh, forearm call on 51, I do believe Micah. Yeah. And Rage Bradbury popping out of the front of the pack there, lead jammer for Boston Massacre. Agent Mulder going for the goat. As it, oh, it appears that was the pivot who had star in hand, Chariot of Fire, though does escape the pack, puts the star on her helmet. Rage Bradbury took a knock to the inside line, had to reset there, but able to complete that scoring pass for Boston. So four points go up. Boston over the century mark now at 103 points. Naptown held scoreless on that last jam, so they're sitting at 66 points, and we've got 17 and a half minutes left on the period clock. And out of the seven jams, well, seven leads secured in this half, 
Boston has five out of the seven. So seeing the story be told, at least on the jammer side of things, though defensively, things are coming up Millhouse for Naptown. We've got Will Smith taking the star for Naptown out next up against Small Fox for Boston. And Micah coming back in for it from the penalty box for Naptown. A hard press against Will Smith to start, though taking advantage of an open inside line. And that was Sweet Enemy with the save up front there, slowing Will Smith down. But Will Smith has obtained the lead jammer status for Naptown, coming around for points now. Meets up with uh, Sweet E in the front once again. Sweetie, one of the veteran members of Boston Massacre and also creative force behind all of the fantastic graphic art you've seen for our events. Yeah, really, really good looking design for this tournament. Talented person. Good looking blocking up there yes. too. Boston doing a great job with a three wall in the front. That's Aubrey Planets, Sweetie and Nolan keeping the brakes on, those, <laughs> forcing those toe stops, but a cutting the track penalty assessed, and that was on Small Fox. So of course, the power dynamic shifting in Naptown's favor. Yeah, Will Smith waiting for some help from the teammates, able to kind of sweep one of the Boston blockers out of bounds and draw her back, that's Sweetie. Nice hit by Micah there to continue to isolate Sweet Enemy in the back of the pack. Will Smith knocked to the outside, has to reset. Brutal defense here by Boston on the power jam. Uh, Made in America, uh, Will Smith decides to call off the jam there and give the team a power start. Looks like a team timeout for Boston as they kind of regroup for this um, power start that's not going to be in their favor. Although Small Fox is standing, so Thankfully, majority of time has passed. I want to thank another one of our sponsors while we have a moment. That's Blood and Thunder Magazine because life is better on roller skates. Mm -hmm. You can visit them online at bloodandthundermag.com. That's just one of my personal beliefs. I love life yeah. on roller skates. I'm <laughs> sure you agree. And Wicked Skatewear, your source for roller skates, gear, and apparel since 2007. Check out their selection at wickedskatewear.com. I can tell you a little bit about Boston's season as well. Last year, they played nine sanctioned games. They took seven wins, which was a very impressive season for them. They had wins over Charlottesville, Team United, North Star, ORG, Garden State, Ann Arbor, and Blue Ridge. And then they also took a couple of losses to Seaville. Looks like they won over Seaville and they lost to Seaville. I was actually there, the one that they lost in Charlottesville. Oh. Um, very competitive game in a kind of a warehouse facility down near Charlottesville. Um, they also took a loss to Atlanta last year, so a very tough Atlanta team, but a very competitive and, um, and a great season for them last year. So I did notice that one of their most high scoring jammers, Swerko, uh, yes. scored 300 points last year and I don't think on the roster this weekend, right? No, not on the roster this weekend. I know that there have been some changes. Uh, another uh, big point scorer who is no longer in the area, Maya Mangalian. Oh, right. So you'll yeah. notice a few shifts, and then you see the return of Little Pain mm -hmm. after a few seasons. So yeah, it's it was fun to see that. Yeah, so Scorpio Pathic already with lead jammer status here for Naptown on the power start. Um, Boston Jammer back into play as well on the initial pass as Scorpio Pathic coming through for points on the first scoring pass for, for Naptown. Big hits on Small Fox in the pack to hold her back on the initial pass and it looks like a penalty that was a track cut on small fox so her second penalty in two jams here uh, scorpiopathic on the scoring pass as i mentioned for naptown but having some trouble making it past boston's defense a little bit of speed in the pack attempted some offense but we'll see Will Smith working on the last line of defense. That's Scorpio Pathic. I'm sorry. That's okay. <laughs> they, they have kind of similar um, skating styles, actually. I, yeah. <laughs> Four more points go up for Naptown, and it looks like Boston's jammer standing. So Scorpio Pathic was ready to call it if she got that instruction, but she didn't. So they're going to let this run. Uh, Small Fox rejoining play from the penalty box now as Boston's jammer star in hand on the initial pass still for Boston. Scorpio Pathic completes the second scoring pass for Naptown. And we have a Boston, oh, that's Small Fox. Three penalties and two jams here. Wow, Banshee, that is a yeah. rough road. Yes, it is. And it, this is just proof that it happens on both sides. So even though first 
uh, first period of the game, Naptown had an increase in jammer penalties. It appears to be Boston's lot at the moment. Yeah, so Naptown with a big pickup there, 10 to zero on the last jam, bring their score up to 80. So just 23 points between the two teams as we are about 13 and a half minutes left to play in this game. That's Will Smith taking the star on the power start for Naptown. And who's that with the pivot on the Boston side? Oh, that's Wednesday Adams. Wednesday we, Adams, okay. We've seen uh, uh, that familiar role throughout the game. And Adams bracing in the front, anxiously awaiting Will Smith's arrival. Yeah, I know sometimes in a situation like this, a team will field a primary jammer as pivot, you know, when, when we've got a jammer in some trouble like uh, Small Fox is right now. But lead jammer going to Naptown, established pretty quickly there by Will Smith. And we do see that Small Fox standing in the box with the star already in hand. So four penalties thus far for Small Fox. And Diamond, interestingly enough, has been benched since jam three. So and we see the star on her head. Yeah, she's lined up for the next jam as um, Will Smith fighting at the front wall of Boston's defense, just one to beat up there, able to make it by for a scoring pass for Naptown, the first of this uh, power jam. Small Fox able to complete the initial pass out of the penalty box as well, so coming around for points now. Both jammers approaching the back of the pack. Will Smith gonna call it off and prevent any points from going up for Boston there, so a four to zero power start on that last jam. Boston's defense kind of won that one, I'd say. Yes. <laughs> the only 19 points separating Massacre and the Tornado Sirens. A little over 12 minutes remaining on the clock. Oh, and we're, we're seeing the high fives on the Naptown bench right in front of us. Though yeah. I haven't seen the, the little crab uh, walk. Oh, it, that was something on the bench yesterday. Oh, I, I didn't see Eve. that. It was adorable. Their coach. <laughs> came across the line making the yeah, all the crab hands. It was really cute, but I digress. Diamond back out there with the star for Naptown. The lead went to Lock Test Monster of Massacre. So Diamond powering through in turn two does break the pack. Lock Test Monster on the scoring pass. Yeah, Tess came in with a lot of impact there on Naptown's back wall, but no call. Four points go up for Tess, and she quickly calls off the jam to hold Naptown scoreless. Time just right. Yeah, that was a nice bit of timing there from Tess, the jammer for Boston. I want to say thanks to another one of our sponsors, Good Mojo Tattoos in Beverly, Mass. You can schedule a free consult with one of their artists today. For more information, visit them online at goodmojotattoos.com. Scorpiopathic wearing the star for Naptown, taking some space from the jammer line to perhaps get some perspective. McLean keeping it close and being driven to the inside line, though, working our way around with some juking midway. Scorpiopathic ending up on the outside line, but being taken infield by Massacre, specifically MC Slammer. Casey McLean has been awarded lead, but was reabsorbed by the pack, so having to start the pass again. Looks like Scorpiopathic star in hand, able to make it out on the initial pass before Casey McLean is, even though McLean does have lead jammer status for Boston right now. And Probably Massa gonna see a, a call off here, I, I guess. Sorry. Maybe, yeah. Massacre with the oh. reduced line. Oh, a little too late on that call off. So the, the bench was yelling, but Casey McLean didn't quite hear. So three points stolen by Naptown there. Again, the echo sometimes <laughs> makes it a little tough. Uh, so now a four to two pack advantage for Naptown as we start jam 13. We have Lilsop and MC Slammer in the penalty box. It's going to be Tess versus Will Smith. Yeah, and as you mentioned, two blockers in the box for Boston, so a bit of an advantage at the start here for Naptown. See if Will Smith can capitalize. And that Will Smith does lead quickly achieved within 10 seconds. Mm -hmm. And a slow pack in turn two. Tess pushing up on a triangle of defense. Boston losing uh, Agent Malder to the penalty box as little something is released. Will Smith already four points on the jam, approaching the back of the pack right now. Uh, Lock Test Monster still on the initial here, so Naptown defense doing a great job. And Sweetie says, yes, I'm down to tango, and I am inbounds <laughs> in play, giving the shoulders and really working down the clock on Will Smith. Well, Will Smith will only tolerate it for so long, 
a quick regrouping of massacre blockers as MC Slammer and Sweetie. Sweetie did not leave Will Smith. They are very close to out of play there. Out of play finally called. So Will Smith able to complete a second scoring pass for Naptown, but wow, what a defensive effort by Sweet Enemy. And Will Smith doing a little wave past the bench with a smile after escaping the grips <laughs> of Sweetie. <laughs> Naptown does seem to be a team that's having a, a whole lot of fun this weekend, which is cool to see. I mean, this is important for the season. Yes. It's kicking the 2019 ranking season off, but they are not afraid to have some fun with it. That's just it. The fun is also important. Yeah. To the point, they showed up at the, uh, the pre-event meeting with uh, captain hats, like sea captain hats, and crab hats. Yeah, I actually saw them at the airport on Friday night. They were wearing their crab hats yes. at the airport. Did you know they were on a scavenger hunt? Did you oh, experience that? Oh, no, I didn't. This? No, I didn't. Okay, so I was told the story here at the pre-tournament meeting, and uh, they were on a scavenger hunt, so they had to serenade strangers <laughs> and do a, or do a dance number for a stranger, some crazy stuff. Well, they've definitely been dancing this yes. weekend, that's for sure. And uh, they're keeping the energy going, but Diamond with the star getting caught up behind the massacre defense. It appears we have Small Fox back at it, taking lead pretty quickly, but Pack hovering around the pivot line. We'll see what comes of this as both jammers approach. Yeah, Small Fox trying to pick up as many points as possible there. Referees conferring about how many points should be awarded. We know Naptown held scoreless on that jam. Uh, but we are waiting for the call. It looks like two points going up for Boston Massacre. So a nice bit of timing there with the call off to hold Naptown scoreless and pick up two points for Boston Massacre. Seven minutes left on the period clock. Scorpio Pathic taking the star for Naptown up against McLean for Boston. Naptown with defense set up in the back. Uh, McLean almost able to find a, a line through there, but Chair to Fire closed the door. Naptown effectively handling Casey McLean in the back of the pack. And it looks like a run back on the Naptown jammer. With Wednesday Adams yeah. it, waiting for them to arrive. So Scorpio Pathic now stuck on a back wall of Boston, but able to sneak up the inside line. It's like, oh, and it looks like maybe, what's this one now? You told me earlier, illegal contact, I think, right? Yes, illegal okay. contact. Okay, illegal contact was the call. The hand signal formally, delay of game. Yes, yeah. exactly. So Naptown's jammer, illegal contact on that, I think it was probably the apex jump attempt um, up the inside line there. So Scorpio Pathic in the penalty box right now. Casey McLean on a power jam, but not yet established the first initial pass for Boston. And Wham Bam incredibly uh, effectively annoying with that drawback in turn one. A quick call off. I yeah. think perhaps. Uh, Interesting move there. Casey McLean did establish the initial pass, got lead jammer status, and immediately called it off. Scorpio Pathic standing in the penalty box. Coach had some ideas, I think. <laughs> Feelings and. Feelings and things. Yeah. So power start here for Boston. Um, we're clear in the box in terms of defenders. Of course, Scorpio Pathic standing, ready to re-enter play. Loctest Monster has the star for Boston Massacre. And we've got a pivot line start, it looks like. Not something you see every day these days. Naptown's got defense set up in the back. Really aggressive style of defense that we've seen from them all weekend. Scorpio Pathic re-entering play, meeting up with the back tripod of Boston defense as Lock Test pushing at the front wall. Teams are bridged out here. Knockdown trying to get Lock Test Monster out of bounds. Oh, and oh, wow, a nice steal there out of the box and into lead jammer status for Knockdown. That's Scorpio Pathic. Who knew that Naptown's defense pretty much killed two birds, one stone. They cleared the inside lane, plus held back Lock Test Monster. And Pat picking up some speed, crossing the jammer line. And <laughs> we have uh, pinball jammers at the moment, here, there, and everywhere. Meanwhile, Scorpio Pathic at the front of the pack, drawn back by Sweetie right in front of the jammer line. Yeah, I'd imagine though that Scorpio Pathic has already picked up all of these points, uh, recycled a couple of times through the pack. Loctus Monster, a successful handoff to Caitlin Monahan uh, to put the pressure on, get this thing called off. And it looks like Naptown had received three points of the four on, on that drawback. And we have an official review right now called by Naptown, right? Yes, yeah. Naptown called that. 
So while we wait for information on this official review, just like to thank Evolved Health Chiropractic and Sports Medicine for their support of Boston Roller Derby. If you're experiencing pain, discomfort, or just want to feel and move better, Evolved Health Chiropractic and Sports Medicine can help. Using a unique combination of muscle and joint manipulation, physiotherapy, and customized therapeutic exercise, we aim to get you better faster. This is our website, their website. For more information, www.evolvedhealthchiropractic.com. And the, uh, the cheering with the crab hands I mentioned actually just took place while reading that ad, and I'm thoroughly amused. <laughs> Uh, in Trekkie, there's an even number of jammer penalties in this half. Hmm. Each ha each team has three. Last half, Naptown had seven, and Boston had three. Yeah, I was just about to say, that's a big win for Naptown based on how the first period went. Most definitely. We've got about four minutes on the period clock as we are stopped for an official review. Huge thank you on behalf of New England Roller Derby Report to Sociopathic, their production sponsor, that's S-E-W-C-I-O-P-A-T-H, Sociopath, not Pathic, I apologize. Sociopath is a skater-run business offering custom sewn to order leg wear for teams and individuals. Size inclusive active wear is designed to fit you. Sociopath also offers dozens of armband and helmet cover options for scrimmage and competition. Team discounts are available. Please see sociopath.ca for more details. And yes, they've got laser cats and all sorts of <laughs> other neat prints. <laughs> Well, we've got tons of amazing derby action. The format this weekend has been kind of a round robin where each team plays twice every day, plays every other team that's here. So coming up, our matchups today, after this one concludes at 12 p.m., we've got Dublin versus Sacramento. Then at 2 o'clock, Boston back in action against Houston. At 4 p.m., we've got Dublin playing Naptown. And then final game of the evening tonight, Houston versus Sacramento. So a lot of great action yet to come today, Banshee. And yes. want to take a moment to thank you. You are our tournament head announcer this weekend, and you did a great job. So thank you for filling that uh, that role where it's one of those things where you don't really get a whole lot of appreciation unless something goes wrong, <laughs> and then you hear about it for sure. But None of, <laughs> none of that, but <laughs> I appreciate the thanks. And I am grateful to have basically my announcer dream team here including you Star Trek so really I'm appreciative and uh, I would like to give a shout out actually to one of your uh, colleagues at DC mm -hmm. Roller Girls, uh, a load of sarcasm who was not able to make it to Lobster Roll this weekend however I'd like to show some love and uh, the entire announcer crew thanks you for that round of drinks yesterday Aloda. <laughs> We love you so hard, and I will see you at Siege of Central New York. Yeah, we're definitely in missing. Just a few weeks. Yeah, I'm definitely yeah. missing a load of sarcasm, um, but we yeah. felt her presence last night. Oh, at, we did at, in the Fez room. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so back underway here. Uh, that's Will Smith with the star, and it looks like um, Naptown able to Thank land you. the Boston Jammer in the penalty box as a result of that official review. So a power jam. That was a cut that was called on. Boston's jammer. So Will Smith now on a scoring pass for Naptown on the power jam, getting some nice offensive help from teammates to make it through for four points. So Boston hung up in the corner here on the power jam. Rage Bradbury coming back in. And the score gap is closing here. Just four points between the two teams. Rage Bradbury meeting up with the back wall of Naptown defense. We have a powerful trio of massacre defense at the front. Those uh, Wednesday Adams running up. Oh, has the star on her helmet. <laughs> Interesting there. Will Smith was looking for a cut on a blocker. Um, I guess a long reset there. Everyone is stopped at the pivot line where they love to stop. Yes, it, it, it's basically just a big pile Defensive quagmire, if you will, for both jammers at the moment. Taken to the infield and back behind the pivot line. Adams pushing, though taken to the in infield, and both just really in tune with each other. Mm -hmm. Will Smith trying to keep those toes in bounds. Both jammers having so much trouble with the defense on this jam that Will Smith decided to call it off. It was a nice pickup for Naptown. Probably had a few more points, yeah. Three more points go up, so seven to zero on the jam in favor of Naptown. Two minutes, 20 seconds left on the period clock. 
and, and now Star Trek, I'm looking, keeping a, an eye on our Twitch TV chat. Um, a chat here saying people travel very far for this, of course. Uh, you know, this is part of the labor of love of roller derby and uh, of all of the things for sheer competitiveness. It's mm -hmm. wonderful. Uh, though, as someone said, wow, this is intense. Yes. <laughs> First thing just, in the morning. <laughs> and it just got turned up to 100. So uh, Small Fox with the star for Boston. Diamonds with lead out the gate. Has uh, <laughs> everything going for Naptown right now. Just one point between the two teams. So Diamond coming in for a scoring pass right now. This could be a lead change in favor of Naptown here in the waning minutes of the second period. Diamond takes a knock out of bounds by Sweet Enemy, but already had at least three points there. We'll see if four or three are awarded. We're definitely gonna have a lead change here. All four points for Naptown. So lead change, 112 to 109, a minute and 14 seconds left on the period clock. Okay, so you know how I had my little tally going. So that was the sixth lead change of the game. However, that was the first change in the second half mm -hmm. and it hadn't changed since Jam 8 of period one. So yeah, Boston was in control, incredible. you know, especially going into halftime. I, I think there were about 30 or 40 points between the two yes. teams at halftime, if I remember correctly. So Naptown really able to capitalize here in the second period. I think the, um, the tables definitely turned on jammer penalties between the two periods, so Boston feeling the, the pinch, as it were, on jammer penalties here in the second or period. The, the pinch, pinch, pinch. The pinch, pinch, pinch. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, I said it. Sorry. I am sorry. Sometimes we just can't resist. And I, I just noticed something that you can't see on camera. Right underneath. What is that? <laughs> right underneath the Naptown bench with their tornado sirens and their whole C theme and their roster page on the program. Oh, I saw. <laughs> yeah, I did see that. There, there's, it appears to be a shrimp okay. pillow. Oh, it is wow. a giant shrimp. That Isn't that, is? that crazy? <laughs> yeah. <Yikes. laughs> looks like a neck pillow that looks like a shrimp. Now, check this out. We have all of the love as we head into what is likely the last jam. Scorpio Pathic has the star for Naptown. Up against Casey McLean, Casey McLean number 11. Yeah, high scoring jammers um, for both teams. Successful tight rotation yeah. as well. Big time defense going on right in front of the jammer line. And both jammers being taken to opposite lines pretty consistently. And of course, defensive quagmire in the front coming from Massacre, putting those brakes on. Though moving along in turn one, that's our front of the pack and mid front stretch. McLean is pushing up against Naptown's tripod, swept outside, but back at it. Ooh, McLean finds a line on the inside. Boston picking up lead jammer status, under 30 seconds left on the period clock. We've got a minute and 15 seconds on the jam clock here for Boston. Crash into you, the pivot for Naptown headed to the penalty box. Could be a photo finish on this game, Trekkie. Boston Jammer keeps getting knocked out by Naptown defense in the back. That's Iggy and Palia doing a great job once again on defense. And as someone was asking, where's Naptown from? They're from Indiana. Indianapolis. Yes, Indianapolis, Indiana, <laughs> yeah. to be specific. Scorpio Pathic, just one to beat in the front. That's Adams, able to make it by on the initial pass. Going to put some pressure on, but our period clock has already expired. So Boston would be smart, I think, to, to let this run and pick up as many points as they can. Scorpio Pathic around for a scoring pass, takes a knock out of bounds. Oh, and do we have a penalty on Boston's jammer? Oh my goodness, it was a track cut. So wow, a power jam for Naptown to close this game up. Four points on the board. Now I do think that McLean is sitting on some points because she was mid-pass when she went to the penalty box. So Boston will have some points coming in here, but Scorpio Pathic already in for another scoring pass for Naptown. Boston's defense really. Well, something all over Scorpio Pathic right now. Putting those brakes on, but let's wait and see. Naptown may be celebrating, but we're waiting to see any points, and I do not see yeah. any. I'm surprised by that. I really would have thought that McLean was sitting on some points there, but it looks like the final score, 7-0 to zero on the jam for Naptown. And a 
point come from ahead uh, come from behind win now this is what wow. what we would have expected based on the rankings for yes. these two teams um, a close and competitive t game with Naptown coming out on top and that's exactly what we got but wow such an yes. exciting game to get there yes and it, it is really a treat to have a, such are. an intense game especially in the second half to start the day yeah and Naptown undefeated so far on the weekend so a great showing to start their 2019 season for the Tornado Sirens. There is an official review that has been called by Boston Massacre. That looking for looking for those points, I would imagine. Most definitely, and uh, Smitochondria, their coach, will be heading out to have that discussion. And uh, Wally, we, I, I would like to extend a thank you because we were talking about this. Uh, it takes so much effort uh, to create an effective, fun event like Lobster Roll and many of the other <laughs> uh, WFTDA recognized tournaments and one big piece of that especially this weekend for the live stream being brought to you on WFTDA's Twitch TV channel is due in part to people who take and donate their time and their skill like New England Roller Derby Report uh, Chad Newt and Lady Lana they are wonderful and they have been bringing this high quality broadcast to you for the low low price of free 99 <laughs> on twitch tv courtesy of the wft tda i'd also like to thank heroin bob from wftda who's been moderating on twitch tv and uh being quite helpful to some folks that are new to roller derby so again thanks thank you is just not enough but we appreciate you so a very exciting game um, for Boston versus Naptown. We're going to have some interviews with our MVPs coming up next, so stay tuned for that. And then, of course, our next game is going to be Dublin versus Sacramento. Yet another treat with many more coming ahead. We'll be back shortly with MVP interviews.
trophy. Though, we're chatting with Adams because your performance on the track Thank this weekend you. has been stellar. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> what, what it has been your favorite part as far as gameplay in Lobster Roll this weekend? Um, I think my packs recycling is like killer and it really helps us all be relentless because we're all like fighting for that last foot. Mm -hmm. And that's like, I think just like upstart ante, upstart performance, yes. which is really great. Yeah, and uh, I completely agree. It's been a joy to watch. And many times I do say ouch <laughs> because as soon as you're, you're aggressive blocking though positional, <laughs> It, it, yeah, it, it's not <laughs> something anyone would want to uh, encounter uh, because it is so epic. So thank, thank you for you that. So much. You're welcome. Um, and also just curious, uh, as far as Lobster Roll goes, yeah. aside from the gameplay, what is your favorite thing about the event? I just think it's so good because I feel like a lot of the teams here are having fun. I feel like we're putting on a really good event and I, it's just like really great that's our first year doing it. Mm -hmm. So I think it's the only thing that's better and better. So All right. it's super exciting. Well, thanks, thanks for, for taking the time to chat with me thank and uh, thank you, BRD. Thank you, guys. Hey Derby fans, it's Scar Trek. I'm here with the MVP for Naptown from our last game, Will Smith. Congratulations. Thank you very much. So you have had a name change this year. You want to tell everybody about that? Sure. Um, so for eight years I skated under the Derby name Made in America. Um, so for the past two seasons, last season being my first, um, I decided to change to um, not my legal last name, but my uh, chosen last name, which is Will Smith. Um, I just want to celebrate my own identity and what I feel closest to and most identified with so um, you know I don't want to make anyone feel like my whole life is about this main America patriotism I think that I kind of earned a reputation for that but this year I or this year and last year it was more about just kind of being myself letting my true color shine and just um, you know owning that more well I love it um, so Naptown wow what a weekend three for three tons of tough games out there you've got one more game to play it's against Dublin this afternoon so what are you guys thinking going into your final game of the weekend we all feel great. Um, I couldn't be happier to be playing Dublin last. It's sort of strange because today is almost like a direct repeat of Division II playoffs two years ago. We played Boston in the morning and played Dublin in the evening, the same, kind of almost the same exact schedule. So um, we felt really great that year. We feel really great this year. Dublin is an awesome team, great people. Um, so we're just looking forward to hitting the track with a great team again. Well, right on. We're looking forward to seeing it. Up next, though, we have Dublin versus Sacramento. So stay tuned and congratulations, Thank Will Smith. Thank you very much. We appreciate it. We